The new microplastic study is terrifying. Not only did the authors find microplastics embedded in people's blood vessel walls, but the people that had those microplastics in their blood vessel walls were 4.3 times more likely to have a heart attack, stroke or die over a three year period. Let's go through this New England Journal of Medicine study, and then more importantly, what we can do to reduce our microplastics exposure and protect our blood vessels. The production of plastics is constantly increasing, and this trajectory is set to persist until at least 2050. And once released into nature, plastics are susceptible to degradation, leading to the formation of microplastics, defined as particles smaller than 5 millimeters, and nanoplastics, particles smaller than 1,000 nanometers, both particles trigger a range of inflammatory effects. And multiple studies have already shown that these microplastics are in our body. They're found in various tissues such as the placenta, lungs, liver, as well as breast milk, urine, and blood. Other preclinical studies, such as my studies, have linked microplastics exposure to heart disease. So the authors of this new study wanted to figure out if microplastics are found within atherosclerotic plaques. So those are the plaques that form in our blood vessels, leading to blockages and heart attacks. The authors then wanted to figure out if these microplastics are indeed found in blood vessel plaques, do they contribute to heart disease, as in do they increase the chance of having a heart attack. The study was conducted in Italy, and it observed patients that had blockages in one of the main blood vessels in the neck, so the carotid artery, and these patients needed to undergo a procedure to remove those blockages. The authors then examined those carotid plaque specimens and analysed them for the presence of microplastics. They used a variety of different measures, such as mass spectrometry, stable isotope analysis and electron microscopy. These were highly accurate measurements, and of the 257 participants who completed the study, 150 of them, so the majority of these patients, had microplastics embedded in the plaques of their blood vessels. This is terrifying. Here is what the authors could see. They were looking inside macrophages, so they are cells of the immune system, and they could see these substances with jagged edges. These are the microplastics. So if we step back for a minute and look at how these plaques develop in our blood vessels, when cholesterol is trapped in our blood vessel walls, it triggers an inflammatory response, including the formation of macrophages. And it was inside those cells that the authors could see the microplastic deposits. The authors then examined whether these microplastic particles were worsening the immune response. So remember, in the preclinical models, the microplastic particles are associated with inflammatory responses. The authors could see that the patients that had microplastics in the plaques from their blood vessels, they had higher levels of CD3 and CD68. They also had a lot less collagen in their blood vessels, suggesting a breakdown in the blood vessel integrity. So far then, the authors have discovered the presence of microplastics in the plaques of blood vessels, and it seems that that worsens the immune response as well as breaks down collagen. Which leads us to the next question. What effect do these microplastics have on the risks of having a heart attack, stroke or death? And this is why people are freaking out on social media about this study. The people that had microplastics in the plaques of their blood vessels had a 4.53 times increased chance of a heart attack, stroke or death over the three years follow up period. The two main types of microplastics that were found in the blood vessel plaques was polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride, and in those various forms, they're used in a wide range of applications, including the production of food and cosmetic containers, as well as water pipes. Microplastics have been found in drinking water, a large range of foods, cosmetic products, and air, and can be transported over long distances by wind. And unfortunately for us, given the wide distribution and availability of these microplastic particles, trying to get rid of all of the potential sources in humans is nearly impossible. But there are strategies we can use to reduce our exposure, and we'll get to that shortly. But this all begs another question. Why weren't microplastics found in all patients? Well, while the study wasn't specifically designed to explore the possible sources of these microplastics in the carotid plaque, comparison data on the basis of the locations of the patient's homes and the recruitment centres did not reveal obvious differences. Likewise, they cannot establish why only polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride among the 11 types of plastics assessed were detected. There are many unanswered questions that need further research.
The authors of the study also point out that these results do not prove causality. Yes, there's an association between the presence of these microplastics within plaque and the incidence of cardiovascular disease or death, but we need to make sure that there aren't any other confounding variables. So yes, correlation doesn't equal causation and more research is needed, but this study is incredibly compelling and for me personally, I'm going to do everything that I can to reduce my microplastic exposure. Here's a list of seven strategies that I'll be using to reduce my exposure. The first is to continue avoiding processed and packaged foods. The packaging of those types of foods is typically plastic, so again we want to try and make sure that the microplastics from the packaging doesn't seep into our food where it can be absorbed by the body. The second is when food needs to be stored, make sure to use non-plastic containers such as glass, ceramic or stainless steel. It's the same idea with microwaving foods, so if I need to microwave foods, I make sure to not use a plastic container, instead I use glass. I've substituted non-stick cookware with cookware made from non-toxic materials, such as cast iron, stainless steel and ceramic cookware. Avoiding seafood is a tricky one for me. Salmon is a big part of my diet, so I don't think I'm going to give that up, but I'm going to reduce my intake of other types of fish. I make sure to never drink water from a plastic container, and the water that I drink from the tap is filtered. In New Zealand, plastic bags have been replaced by paper bags, so personally I don't need to worry about that. Where possible, I opt for clothing made from natural fibres such as cotton, wool and linen, instead of synthetic fibres such as polyester and nylon, which can shed microplastics when washed. At home, we regularly vacuum to reduce our microplastic exposure. And the final strategy is to select personal care products wisely. For example, a lot of exfoliant products contain microbeads, which have polyethylene in them, so I try and make sure to opt for natural alternatives. But like the study states, it's virtually impossible to completely remove all microplastic exposure. So I try and do everything I can to make sure I've got healthy blood vessels. I have a healthy diet with plenty of fiber and unsaturated fats, such as extra virgin olive oil, avocados, nuts and seeds. And my diet is low in salt and saturated fats. I regularly exercise, prioritize my sleep, and my blood pressure is below 120 on 80. But on the point of that blood pressure target, for my older patients that I see in the clinic, we often accept higher readings because we need to make sure that we don't drop their blood pressures too low and cause them to feel dizzy and fall. And finally, I aggressively lower my blood cholesterol levels, so personally I aim for an LDL cholesterol level of below 60. That target is based on the PISA study results, showing that we can develop blockages in our blood vessels if the LDL cholesterol is above 60 mg per deciliter. So for me personally, I again try to reduce my saturated fat intake and replace it with unsaturated fats. I also use medications to try and bring my overall blood cholesterol levels down. But again, just because I do those strategies does not in any way mean that you should as well. Please make sure to discuss with your own doctor. And if you're looking for a supplement that's got great evidence for reducing heart disease, make sure to check out this next video here, and a massive thank you to all of the patrons supporting the channel.